welcome back everybody. Today I've got an AWA radiola and I've just zoomed back as far as I can go and uh, let's take it back a bit further. This thing's huge. It's a uh, model uh, model 617 whether it's a T or a TZ or whatever I'm really not 100% sure but uh, looks to be around 1948 and um, like I said, it's, it's big. It's just big and wood. And occasionally it's a bit of work, but I mean, the veneer is uh, pretty much still on there, so this would come up really nice. Um, one, two, three, I'm not sure. That clicks. Hmm. Volume or tone. And we've got a couple of knobs on the side there. And what's that do? Oh! And if you can see the little dial selector, broadcast, whatever, whatever, band and bang. Okay. And that probably the tuning. Yeah. Not working real well. I'm telling you. That's that's loose. Anyway, I'll um I'll just um turn the camera off and switch this around because it's uh around about 36 pounds in weight so not easy to move the back of it and we've got uh one two three four five six valves and uh five by three six by six six u seven that i can see there and i'm not sure about the others have to check the schematic okay antenna wire and great big conkin transformer and what looks to be like a field coil as well and some power. God, look at that wheel. <laughs> Can't get it out. Anyway, I uh, think we'll be replacing this um, power cord. Don't like the look of it. Anyway, I will struggle to get this thing out of the case and we can have a look at it. Okay, finally got it out of the case and uh, that was a struggle, believe me, and also <laughs> trying to work out how I was going to uh, mount this thing but on the bench. But I'll just zoom back and that's what I'm dealing with and I don't recall working on something uh, so complicated um, here is stuff everywhere and we can see that at least something has been done to it and that little cap so yeah 25 microfarad yeah 40 volts so uh, cathode bypass has been put in and that's all right. Everything else looks original. Um, the wiring, though, I don't know. If that's been done after the fact, it's been done very well. And especially that little blue wire there that's been uh, somehow tucked in, you know, under there in the RF section. So, not sure, not sure. But, um, I'll just show you the uh, speaker. And where are we? go back oh, that appears to be the um, the uh, voltage control for the uh, transformer and you can't see it but under there's a little knob but anyway um, here's the speaker so yeah fill coil and it's got this cute little uh, connector knob there <laughs> on, onto the speaker itself fair enough fair enough so I'm hoping that's okay but um, no, I want to do my normal checks, but I can't, because I can't get to the uh, 5x3. Oh, sorry, this, I think 6x5, actually. Can't get it. There's just too many wires in the way. So I figure, hey, go for broke, and let's see if we get any DC out of the uh, rectifier into the voltage, into the, into the uh, filter caps. So I've got our two caps right there. And this probably the main one there. I put that onto the negative and the positive terminal here. Make sure it's not touching anything else. That looks safe to me. All right. Here we go little bit of voltage. Ooh, dial globes are lighting up. Shit. I 
I'm at 130 volts and so far <laughs> we've now zoomed up to what, 260 and rising. Well, no smoke, no shorts, no nothing bad. That's at 200 volts. Oh, pardon me. I moved the camera. There you go. So you can see she's uh, dropping down. Ooh, got some signal. Chick, I'm sure you can just hear it. I think we're going to get something. There we go. Is there a repeat season or transfer it to another theatre or something? Because we'd like to see it and we missed it. It works. Sold out for it. Well, I'll turn that off. Wow. I really didn't think it would. So, uh, yeah, dirty band switch. That's for sure. Uh, I think this has got, oh, God, broadcast. Um, yeah, of course, but. Uh, um, one, two, three shortwave bands on it. And also, from what I can see, uh, a phono um, section for it as well, or s a slot for it. So, that's working really well. Um, wow. I mean, uh, this is going to be a long video. Well, I'm not going to make it a long video, but it's going to take a while to change these components out and, of course, clean the thing up. But, um, hey, it's working. And that's the great thing about it. God, again, I am so lucky. Um, something like this reminds me of something that um, from Don's old radio shed. Um, some of the units he works on, they're just chock a block full of stuff, especially the uh, European ones you get sometimes. So uh, I'm not used to it. I'm just used to the standard old broadcast and maybe with one um, shortwave band on it. So, um, all right, I'm going to start work on this and um, we'll change some um, caps and get those new filter caps in there, of course, and uh, progress through. Well, the uh, filter caps are in and let's give it a test. Let's monitor that voltage. And where's my multimeter? And that's right there. Okay. Let's hope I've done this correctly. Here we go. Bit of power. That is just so quick. Alright, so far so good. Bring it up to... Well, it's got a lot of voltage in it anyway, so I might as well just bring it up to 200 volts on my side. Not bad. Not bad. Pretty ratty sound, of course. Um, doesn't like my fluoro light here either. So um, anyway, anyway, at least those two caps are done. Now, oh god, here, here we go. Here we go. So I'm going to start changing everything. Well, not everything, but uh, yeah, get all those black caps out and uh, put some new ones in there. So I'll start that, and we'll just come along and again, just normal thing, just progress, you know, and um, and I'll update it every um, few caps back soon. Okay, here's some work so far. I've changed out um, a couple of um, oh, oh, 0.5s, so they're 0.47s, um, 0.01 cathode bypass and an 047. 
there and of course that one there I changed earlier on as well as a uh, little resistor there just so I could get into the uh, cap can so let's turn it on and see what we get and we wait 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 come on <laughs> oh here it comes yeah, she's so much fun to work with, actually. She did lots of uh, fun, and we had a big laugh, and I feel like Deb and Stella are like a comic duo. When I watched them in the rehearsals with the kids, so there was lots of fun. And they're so much... People on the train, and they had to say, well, you're going to have to wait for another 25 minutes for the next train. I that's okay. Well, I wondered if that's because the Werribee line was out this morning, and it is still out today. Maybe people were heading across and trying to get on. At... Well... Sounds still a bit ratty. Uh, there's no real resonance in it at all. Um, but we've still got a few caps to go. And we can check out valves and all sorts of things. Which, and resistors, of course. So um, I'll just keep progressing. And um, we'll see how we get. Well, I've been Getting progressing on slowly but surely. And getting some caps uh, replaced. And she's running at the moment. Up here, we measure them between the eyes. <laughs> I reckon. Yeah, I'm good stuff. Good stuff. Good old ABC. Um, I turned it off. I just wanted to show you. I um, noticed <laughs> there was a, 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 a poly tucked right in behind there. So I had to um, remove the voltage selector. And I just wanted to show it to you. And I mean, um, one, two, three, five different voltages and a knob to change it. I mean, you yeah, know, that's quality stuff. I mean, you know, a lot of expense uh, for the day putting that in just to uh, switch voltages where normally you know they just solder them on to the right uh, tap so that is really cool just get that out of the way all right I'll just keep going and it sounds a bit ratty to me still the, uh, the sound quality but I at the moment putting that down to well half caps and um, the remaining which is about one two three four five six four caps this thing and um, could be the output valve as well too, never know. But uh, I'll, I'll change a few more caps and come back. Well, the recapping is finally done. And it took a while. And <laughs> it wasn't that hard. It was just time consuming. And it was a bit difficult, especially in that area there. And right in there, so I had to remove the, uh, the trimmers there just so I could get my uh, soldering iron and uh, uh, pliers in there. But other than that, she's a goer. Andrew, that we're, we're all in this together. Um, your ability to... And the sound is crap. Yeah. It well, really, yeah. really is. Yeah, your ability That's, to... Uh, the, this is the ABC, you know, you know normally the best um, sound installation there is. You know, not being able to... Have you seen it happen? Um, I, I swore... That's I, a bit I, better. I, but, I watch Channel 9 News every night. But I'll turn it off. Um, the other thing, I did find out that uh, this is a, I found out the model. Uh, this is a 617TW. Radio Museum says this was made in 1952. Um, <coughs> excuse me. The, from what I can see or found out, the um, 617 series was made between 1948 to 52. So um, again, take Radio Museum's word for it. Um, and um, what else? What else? Oh yes. Uh, I found a, an ad for it, so let's just say you know, back in the late 40s, early 50s, if you wanted a 617, it would cost you the princely sum of uh, 52 pound. Now, uh, given that the average wage in 1948 was seven pound something shillings a week, uh, that's a damned expensive uh, bit of electronics for the home. So uh, I think it was out of the budget of uh, most uh, people anyway. Um, but great quality, um, and what is it? There was another one there. It was worth seventy-two pound. I mean, shit, a lot of money back in the day. Um, but fifty-two pound. I checked it up on the um, inflation calculator, and that equates to about three and a half thousand bucks in today's money. So uh, we have more buying power these days with our dollar, that's for sure. So, uh, but anyway, anyway, um, I'm going to get this. Um, sat upright 
and I'm going to check out those valves and then afterwards, probably the last job, will be to uh, look at the power cord there. So uh, I'll get this set up and we'll uh, just change look. the uh, output valve, the new 6v6, here's the old one there, uh, a Model 10, and uh, I don't know if you can see it there, made in Japan. Okay. Good night. Well, well, I guess the Japs made stuff like this. Here we go. And Rob was alluding to that as well. Like, that, that mentorship that comes through skating, well, that must be something... That's a hell of a lot better. you've seen uh, work in Seymour incredibly well. Mm, nice resonance. And I, um, I think at, at the skate park... Nice. Kind nice. Of, like, so that's just an extra little bit of interest for you there. Oh, nice, well, I like that. Another All right, let's turn that off. All right, I'll um, cut again and we'll um, have a look at that um, power cord. No, it's Superman! Yes, sir, kids, a real flying Superman that can be yours. Looks just like Superman himself. He's made of tough blue plastic and has a bright red cape that fits on his shoulders. With your flying Superman, you get a powerful launcher to send him sky high, zooming through space just like Superman does in his adventures. Now, you'll want to be one of the first to have your own flying Superman, so listen carefully, because here's all you do to get yours. Send one box top from Kellogg's Corn Flakes and just 10 cents. That's one box top and just 10 cents to Flying Superman, Box 330, Battle Creek, Michigan. Or use the handy order blank right on the Kellogg's Corn Flakes package. Get your Flying Superman from Kellogg's now. Well, I hope you liked that ad. I certainly did. <laughs> I want to send a box top and 10 cents over to Battle Creek, Michigan. Um, <clears throat> I don't know, about, don't know who owns P Power Box 330 at the, at, at the moment, though. Um, anyway, 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 I thought it was a bit of fun like that. Um, here's the power cord, and um, there's a plug there, and a little, little holder there, but this thing just pops out. And as you can see, two plug. So, uh, oh, and fuses, which is, uh, I think, quite uncommon for an old radio, but again, classy, classy radio, sort of uh, no, no, expense, no, no expense spared for this one. Um, what I'm going to do, um, I'm not going to be able to fit a, uh, uh, a three-wire cord in there, that's for sure, so I'll just cut this out and um, insulate that little hole there so nobody sticks something in there while it's running, never know, and uh, there's a little hole there already, so I'll put the power plug in there, <coughs> new power cord in there, alright, so I will do that, and then we can finish off this video, well everyone, it is all done, finally, power cord's in, um, I've insulated the, uh, the plug, so um, you can't get any fingers or objects in there, uh, in the opening, uh, it'll be a bit hard, but anyway, still, you never know, I also added a little mp3 plug into it and i thought well hey why not um the selector band has um a, a switch for, for phono so you know record player i thought well why not so we'll just use the existing um circuit there i'll just put in a three and a half mil plug and let me turn the radio on for you Obviously, what he had gone through, and they made the decision on that. And Alex was quite comfortable with that, yet disappointed that he didn't play the game. Yeah, good old football. Anyway, anyway, let's um, test the uh, MP3. There it is. <laughs> That's my phone, but um, got something set up. So we'll listen to old time radio. In time and space, told in future. Nice. And there we go. All done. So, great. I was going to say great little radio, but it's not. It's bloody huge. Um, so, that's it. I'll put it back in the box and give it back to the owner. And I uh, should be very happy with it. So, thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I certainly yeah, had fun doing it. Yep. A uh, long job, but worthwhile in the end so i will catch you all again very shortly so take care everybody stay safe and have fun bye